and his opponent training out of Miami, Florida, and representing Fight Sports, Roosevelt Souza. Roosevelt Souza representing Fight Sports, fighting out of Miami, Florida. Man, this guy's got some nasty leg attacks, Jake Watson. Yeah, we've seen him put incredible, incredible torque on the footlocks he throws. And you know what? This is sort of a battle of two people who have great footlocks, right? And Absolutely. Roosevelt has used them against some of the best of the best, as has Felipe Andrew. We'll see who's going to be able to generate more power here in the, the major super fight, the heaviest fight of the day. Let's meet the competitors in our next super fight battle with a 10 minute time limit. Training out of San Diego, California and representing Alliance, Felipe Andrew. We talk, we talk about footlocks. Felipe Andrew is a foot locking machine, the Bochinia master. It's one of the most exciting competitors in the IBJJF circuit, specifically. Uh, not just talking about his submission attacks, which he seems to get out of nowhere. He's got an amazing single leg switch counter that he pulls off every single time. And it, and it looks like he just gets better every time he's out yeah. there, right? Let's look at this tail of the tape. Philippe Andrew and Roosevelt Souza, similar in age, size, but a 50 pound weight discrepancy between the two and a little bit of height for Roosevelt Souza coming in at 6'4 to Felipe Andrew 6'2. Let's get this match underway. Roosevelt Souza, blue kimono, Felipe Andrew, white kimono, Battle of Alliance Jiu Jitsu versus Team Fight Sports. Roosevelt training with those beasts out of Miami, Florida with Roberto Cyborg, Abreu, guys like Victor Doria. Both athletes showing their cards a little early. Really yeah. want it's, it's it's clear who that they both want to be on their back. Felipe Andrew now in San Diego, California. Yeah, really immediately going for that that knee cut. One thing I'd like to say about Felipe Andrew is the way that he puts dead weight on his opponents. He, and by dead weight, I mean he leans so effectively. Not only is he driving forward, but he's allowing the fullness of his body weight to be the pressure. Avalanche. <laughs> like, like an avalanche. It's really smothering. It's very tiring to deal with. And he is 213 pounds. It doesn't matter if you're 264 or 213. You are dealing with 213 pounds of, of trained Beast on top of you. Train killers. <laughs> and, and at the same time, you, you talk about the pressure that he's putting on, but he's very agile. He's able to adapt to any movement that anyone on the bottom makes. He's able to switch sides, multi-directional pass. He's got a he's got an amazing passing game as well. Felipe Andrew just uh, you know very very well-rounded competitor, but he's got to watch. He's got to cross his T's and dot those eyes. And any time that Roosevelt touches those legs, that's a very very dangerous thing to be caught in. Any Anytime Roosevelt just touches the leg, just get away. Just get away. Yeah, and you see uh, Felipe Andrew really doing a good job of keeping that leg in between his own legs, but whenever it seems like he's in danger of getting put in a single leg X situation, he does step out except for right now. And this is the position that Roosevelt Souza wants to be in. He want, okay, and a good job by Felipe Andrew. I was going to say, he wants to be here in the single leg X. A lot of movement from these heavyweights right off the bat. Will we see a footlock shootout? So either we're going to see a footlock shootout or somebody going for the back off of the, you know, off of the leg attack or possibly, you know, somebody trying to get up on top, trying to, you know, advance in the position here. But something tells me we're going to see Roosevelt Souza yeah. going for a footlock <laughs> right here. And this could get tight very, very quickly, Ricardo. He's got that Bochini style footlock where he grabs the lapel, twists the upper body which rotates the foot, then extends it. It's a little bit different than the old school footlock with your hand on top of your forearm. It's, uh, I love that position. And something to mention too, when we're talking about footlocks in the super and the ultra heavyweight categories or in the absolute category like we have today, this is a lot of manpower yes. coming into a pretty small joint considerably, right? So 
this is a, he, instead he uses it to come up on top for two, but could always opt back just like he is right now with some big pressure in on the foot of Felipe Andrew. That is not the same as a, maybe a lightweight full lock battle, yeah. right? We, where we see a lot of exchanges, maybe some advantages, and no, there not as many submission finishes. But with these guys, there is a reason why they consistently finish those positions. Of course, they're excellent at understanding the angles and precision, but also we've got to consider the, the size and strength there. Yeah, Roosevelt all the top. He's got to watch out for Felipe's flash triangle that he likes to do. He kind of puts his foot in like a lasso, very kind of mm -hmm. lackadaisy, and then just shoots the triangle up top. Now, as I talk through that, Felipe almost got a sweep attempt there. Roosevelt just putting the tons of pressure on top now. Felipe now using that foot on bicep to make some space. And there it is again. Look, look at that leg inside with the foot on the bicep. And as Roosevelt knows that, so he's, he's you know, posturing his upper body. Felipe now using the lapel to kind of control Roosevelt. Very smart strategy for a bigger opponent. Yeah, one thing that Felipe Andrew really likes is to throw the lasso through all the way to the underside of the thigh so that he can sweep over at the top. Mm -hmm. Roosevelt just is posturing up immediately and ripping that grip out of there, but Felipe keen on immediately getting that grip back. And by the way, earlier, one thing about Felipe Andrew as well is I think he has some pretty flexible feet because there was, a, there was an arch on his foot there for absolutely. a second. Poker face. Yeah, absolutely. Not even an emotion. Andrew now uh, rotating underneath the big man there. Try to get to the outside of the leg. Smart strategy. Feeding that lapel, 50-50 position that we saw earlier on quite a bit. We see Felipe attack the feet a lot from here, but we also see him do such a great job at looking for the back. Yeah. He does a very, very good job transitioning to the back, and especially with heavier opponents, that can be very difficult to do because they're, like, as we see, Roosevelt's able to really drive his right knee forward, keep a very heavy base. He has flexible hips. So it, for Felipe to be able to bring his left leg behind the way he just did and insert that and start to create a new off-balancing position is a very big task, especially when someone has a 50-pound weight advantage. Yeah, now he's coming up. Looking for this potential sweep. He's got both grips. Looking wow. to dive over the top as Felipe oh. Andrew taking the back. Wow, Andrew, both he has both hooks. hooks. It almost looked for a moment he was going to fall over the top, like he was going to fall into his head, but he had such a smart way of getting those hooks in. He scores four, but now he will be in the closed guard position. And Roosevelt Soto just willing himself back into the closed guard. That was the, the slow turn that seemed unstoppable, but a really great development from Felipe Andrew giving himself a comfortable two-point lead. And congratulations to Felipe Andrew for going for it, because it's always risky when you jump on the back of somebody that's larger mm -hmm. than you. You never know if you're going to be able to get the hooks, get the score, or you're going to end up falling off and ending up in a, a more compromising position. But Felipe Andrew throwing caution to the wind there, he went for it. He wants to score. He wants to make a statement. Felipe Andrew wants to show the world you know, why he's one of the most exciting geek players players in IBJJF competition right now. Yeah, certainly not somebody who is going to shy away from a big opportunity. It's Felipe Andrew, as well as Roosevelt Souza here, trying to step for a head control guard pass, forcing Felipe Andrew to get some frames in front of him. Look at him dive on that foot. foot. In, yeah. in the meantime, right? Yeah. yeah. Diving right on that foot lock. And sometimes not enough to to get a, uh, an attack, but able to put himself back in a good position, right? It was just enough of a threat that it seemed Felipe kind of took off the gas of a potential sweep, and it was able to maintain the top position. He looked for a knee cut there for a moment, and now a little more neutralized. And you know, with a foot lock like Roosevelt Souza, it feels like any time his <laughs> armpit is on top of your shin that you have to consider it a genuine threat. <laughs> Felipe showing a lot of diversity in his guard attack game here. You know, looking for the 50-50 lapel, as we saw earlier, but playing it a little bit of differently than we saw. And, and we're seeing a lot different of the, this position, a lot of different uh, sequences than we saw earlier matches because the difference here is Roosevelt's actually trying to break a leg if he gets caught in that position. A lot of the other, you know, competitors, obviously they're trying to attack, but, um, you know, it's just not as dangerous, I think. Roosevelt getting swept down by Felipe Andrew. Felipe Andrew on top gets another two points. Passing position here, too, as he yeah. folds the legs on top, one on top of the other, kind of neutralizing the hips here of Souza. If he can bring his left leg over to their side, he could have passed that way. But Roosevelt doing an excellent job bringing his legs back inside and elevating the hips, alleviating that pressure of Felipe. And he's able to open his right knee again and utilize that right hip. We've been waiting for Roosevelt Souza to extract his leg before going for that sweep. And now look at Roosevelt Souza inverting underneath. Almost about to lose his gait. Felipe yeah. tries to fix he it for him. He fixed it for him. <laughs> He's such a... 
Again, Again he fixed yes. it for him. Don't be confused. He's not a nice guy. He <laughs> needs it to get the choke in. <laughs> Felipe Andrew gets the four again. Can't get the back collar choke without the gi on your opponent. And right now he's got both grips locked in place. Will he finish it here with one minute, 50 seconds left? He pulls it and Roosevelt Stoves attacks. Felipe Andrew. Yeah, awesome matchup. We saw sweeps, we saw submission attempts, we saw leg locks attempts. We saw a finish with beautiful choke by Felipe Andrew. That was very impressive. I don't want to correct myself. Felipe Andrew, of course, a very nice guy, yeah. but also a very lethal competitor. <laughs> and we saw that there. What a great show, great performance. And Roosevelt Sozer shows some great uh, guard attacks, great dynamic guard as well. Even at the end there, before getting the back taken, he did showcase great flexibility in his guard. Kept that footlock attack active and dangerous, but it will be Felipe Andrew taking home the victory. Yeah, great matchup by both competitors. Congratulations, Felipe Andrew winning the super fight here at the IBJJF Flow Grappling Grand Prix. Your winner.